All right, let's see what happens. Um, well, what, what Rick was just talking about, the other fish run project, I'll, uh, I'll be brief and try to explain a little bit more about it uh, tomorrow when I have 10 minutes of time. Um, but what he explained is something that we strongly, I'm, I'm involved in the project, and, and I strongly believe that it'll be the future in making a change on how people see um, hydropower, how people feel about it, and how people are willing to actually take part in making the change. And when we get not only consumers, but our goal is to also get companies and institutions involved um, in buying fish electricity, so to say, fish passage, fish ladder electricity, the fish run electricity, as soon as we've accomplished making the first project a reality, actually building four fish ladders in a very important river here in pretty close to Helsinki, I'm sure that it'll start an avalanche of, of change, not only in Finland, but it's, uh, it's something that can be brought um, outside of Finland as well. But just to give you guys an idea of who I am, I'm an, I'm an, I'm an actor in Finland, um, in film, in movies. Um, I'm also a fly fisherman. Um, and my background is, is I've done about 20 films in Finland, of which many have been the, uh, the biggest box office hit. So quite a few people, if not almost everybody in Finland, knows um, who I am. And a lot of people know that I'm a fly fisherman as well. Um, I'm a fish activist, first and foremost. Um, I consider myself more a fisherman and a fish activist than, than an actor, which is my profession. And about a few years ago, the fishing discussion, the media, uh, the public discussion escalated into another level. The history of Finnish fish politics and fishing discussion in the media is quite grim. It's quite sad. We have a bunch of high-level scientists who for dozens of years have banged their heads against the, uh, the Ministry of Agri Agriculture's wall trying to get their studies out there, trying to get their message out there, trying to get their concerns out to both the politicians' attention and to the media's attention, and thus to the big audience's attention. About three, two, three years ago, I decided now's the time to actually try and make a difference, because I, as an actor, have the possibility of actually <coughs> bringing it out there. When the scientists of which one of the leading ones is here, Hannu Lehtonen from the uh, um, University of Helsinki. When they can't get their message out there and the wide audience doesn't know what's wrong with the fishing politics, with the fisheries management, with anything fish related, no change is going to happen. Because politics has a tendency of working, of actually, it, a change happens through public awareness and public pressure. And the worst thing for a politician that could happen is having their name or their party's name or their ministry's name in the media constantly in com combination of negative things, negative news about a single politician or a ministry or a po political party. I'm um, not going to translate these. I'm just going to show you a bunch of examples of, of different, different articles that are all fishing politics related from the leading main Finnish, Finnish media. So for me, the possibility of actually talking about this, when the media is always interested in asking about, you know, my movies or something else, what, what, what am I interested about? I'm talking about, this is actually from today, um, I'm talking about fish and fish politics and, and, and the problems we had. This has made it possible for the politician's voice to be heard. My message, yeah, okay, let's get rid of it. Um, my, I'm not going to show that, so we'll just, okay. my message has always been pretty much what Hun Lehtonen and all the other scientists have in their studies, in their extensive research, what they've come up with. I'm just providing a voice for these guys um, so that the voice can be heard, so that the public is aware of what's going on, and so that the politicians 
have the maximum pressure on their backs and on their necks um, to actually, they're being forced to make a change. I wish that other countries around, around Europe, that <coughs> you who, who have the chance, would start contacting your local celebrities and finding out if there are actors, musicians. I know there's something in Sweden where heavy metal artists came together and, and campaigned for, for salmon or endangered fish species. But getting these people involved and having that voice that actually makes the media write about fish makes a humongous change. Um, just a brief history of what's wrong in Finland. Um, pretty much everything is wrong in Finland. The Ministry of Agriculture never cared. They never gave a shit about the fish. They've been extremely blind or ex extremely deaf deliberately deaf and blind towards um, the so-called fish activism, the, the willingness of, of saving the fish, creating healthier and stronger fisheries. Um, Baltic, Baltic salmon is a great example. Um, all the scientists, both Finnish and international scientists, agree that the Baltic salmon quotas are way too big. They're unsustainable. They're endangering the whole future of the Baltic salmon. But the Finnish politicians, and unfortunately all the other politicians around the Baltic Sea as well, are in favor of unsustainable fishing quotas that are way too big. When we talk about other fish species, such as um, lake-run brown trout, sea-run brown trout, um, landlocked salmon, um, so on and so on. Pretty much all the most valuable um, fish that we can, you know, that fishermen, fly fishermen, spin fishermen dream about. <coughs> Pretty much every single species here in Finland are listed under the uh, endangered fish species list, which is a horrible situation. Something needs to be done. Um, through the public awareness, change is happening. We've had some laws being passed uh, during the last couple of years where the minimum catch, uh, catch sizes, I don't know the, uh, the correct word in English, have been raised, for example, for brown trout from 40 centimeters to 60 centimeters, guaranteeing that they have a chance to actually spawn, hopefully, at least once. And, and there's been campaigning against the, uh, the big retail chains, um, the big grocery store markets and, and retailers who are selling the endangered fish. And many of them have quit selling the uh, endangered fish species. Um, one humongous possibility of making this change is social media. Without social media, without Facebook, and without Twitter, I would have had no way of bringing my voice heard. A lot of these articles that you just, just saw are direct quotes from what I wrote, written on my Facebook page, as a public post. As a public figure, you always have the advantage of media following what you're saying and media being interested. And when I get angry at a politician or a retail chain or the Ministry of Agriculture, the media has a tendency of writing about it because it's a conflict. It's a public, you know, it's, a, it's something of interest. Ten years ago, if I wanted to try and help making this change, it would have meant I would have stood somewhere on a marketplace handing out pamphlets, shouting on a megaphone, trying to get somebody to listen to me. All that, all that is needed now in the social media, media era is writing on your social media wall and having that word spread out because every single like and every single share from other people who are interested in the uh, in the issue will spread the word like crazy. It spreads all around the social media, and I've, what I've noticed and what's very encouraging is the fish activism has gone to a level where you know you don't have to be a public figure to to make a change. With social media, with Facebook, there's been cases where somebody has written an angry post about, say a fish uh, seller who's selling the endangered 
sea run brown trout and taken a picture of it and it all of a sudden has thousands of likes and shares which means everybody knows about it and everybody's all, all of a sudden interested about it and the change will happen because people are forced to make the change. Um, also, one great way of making the change is something that a problem with politics. It's scary, it's distant. For an average person, such as myself, a couple of years ago, it would have been an impossible idea for me to write a letter to, um, to some one of our representatives, let alone our ministers. At some point, I just forced myself to write the first one, and I realized it's not scary at all, actually. I can just, you know, I don't have to be the smartest guy in the world to communicate with a politician. I can write whatever I feel like and, uh, and, and try to make a change. When there's been bodings in topics such as the Baltic Salmon Quota, a great way of making something happen has been providing, again through Facebook, because the word spreads, providing a turnkey solution for people who are interested in making a change. A couple of times I've written a post saying, listen guy, guys, now's the time to actually try to make a change. There's a voting in the, in the Finnish parliament a couple of days from now, and they're deciding about the salmon quotas. Here's a list of the people you need to send an email to and tell them what you feel. And here are a couple of points that you can use. Do not copy-paste exactly what you feel like. You can send them one sentence, or you can be lengthy, but remember that these guys don't have the time to, uh, to read long, lengthy emails. Just express your opinion and your hopes and your feelings. And uh, a couple of these big salmon quota decisions were surprisingly overturned by a huge amount of people sending in their letters. Uh, some of the politicians were complaining in the media that the, that the public is being too active. They are bombarding us with these salmon-related emails and it's really interfering with our work, which is quite, um, quite an interesting idea because I believe the, the, the whole idea of democracy is based on people actually trying to make a change. And, and expressing their opinions. If the politicians feel like it's interfering with their work, there must be something wrong with the politician. Mm -hmm. One huge problem to tackle, and I believe, I've been speaking a lot about Finland now, and I hope that you get some ideas of how to benefit from what I've said in, in other countries as well. But I, I believe, as people said, I believe we all share a problem with hydropower and the fact that it's considered free. Um, the fact that, it, for example, in Finland, a company like the, the National Railways can, without any public criticism, um, advertise themselves as green and stamp happily jumping salmon on their trains as a proof of them being green because they're using hydropower. Something is wrong with the, with the way that green, green hydropower, water power, is being communicated to the public. The word green has nothing to do with hydropower. I think if we want to associate a color with hydropower, I think a more accurate description would be poison green or, or salmon blood red would probably be salmon blood red hydropower. These ideas we need to bring to the public, and I, I really hope that the Nordic countries and Europe as a whole will come together and actually campaign and work against hydropower, against marketing hydropower as green. And a lot of that change will start from the EU. I know there's some movement in the EU towards um, the demand for hydropower companies to build fish ladders, to build, build fish ways and passages. Somehow we need to unify the powers, the strength of all these different fishing related institutions and and groups and, and companies and people who want to make that change. Um, we just, you know, we need to combine, combine the powers and, and, and try to change it. That, I believe, can be changed at a, at a national and a local level as well to some extent. 
but the major change will come from the EU. And there's so many people here that have power in their own countries when it comes to fisheries. I really hope you guys communicate after this event and, and connect and, and uh, network. One great way of doing that would be to create a Facebook. Most people are on Facebook, right? Who, who's not on Facebook? One, two. So two, you, you'll be left, left outside of this. But, you know, creating a closed Facebook group, that's an informational wall where people can share, you know, news pieces, news articles, information on what's happening in other countries. For me, it's been extremely valuable to know Gordon from Denmark, who sent me articles in Danish that I've Google translate or have Gordon translate me the key points about how Danish people do their take care of their fishing business. This kind of communication needs to be strengthened, and I think Facebook is one of the easiest and fastest ways of, of doing, it, doing it. You know, something that doesn't have anything to do with fish grain, but has everything to do with just having people connect and network would be, at least for myself and I believe for many others, a very valuable tool and asset to have. Because now searching for that information on Google, not knowing where to find it, takes ages and takes a lot of the other valuable time. Let's see if my great notes have anything else I needed to say. Mm. Nope, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? I'm I'm happy to answer and and I think yeah. This was really encouraging, but if I look on the number of years we were fighting for an improved CFP, this common fisheries policy, and they're still allowed to catch, um, and for example, caught in the Baltic with 38 centimeters, and we know that it got struck high and can propagate only at this 42. So I'm not so optimistic like you that we really can change something. And there, this, the lobbyists are sometimes really too strong. The, the, I'm, I'm sure the lobbyists are, are devastatingly strong. Um, from my point of view, I mean, I, I feel a little awkward talking about what kind of change you know, I personally have been able to help build here in Finland. But combining celebrities with this issue, getting a lot of these medias were, you know, they're the Helsinki Times, the, the BBC of Finland, the National Broadcasting Company, the biggest tabloids in Finland. Fish was never a topic they would ever write about until a celebrity, it's, it's sad, but that's how it goes, until a celebrity started talking about it. Getting celebrities involved would open new doors to new medias. And I really think that you know somebody should look into, in every country, they should contact the local celebrities that are passionate about fly fishing, that have the way of actually bringing it out to the, you know, the tabloids, the, the news broad, the main primetime news broadcasts. Um, and also, I, I wrote, um, anybody could have written it, but, but I wrote um, <coughs> this public uh, attack against the Ministry of Agriculture um, and I just called 20 of my celebrity friends ice hockey players from the Finnish national ice hockey team um, musicians actors all kinds of people that you know people listen to and, and look up to and idolize and I asked them do you want to sign this letter and they all said yes yeah well I'm a fisherman yeah I'm sh absolutely I'll sign it when you had 20 celebrities combined attacking the Ministry of Agriculture, every single media is interested in, in, in it. Um, when you have a bunch of scientists trying to attack the Ministry of Agriculture, there are niche medias that are usually the highest quality medias, but that usually don't have the, the biggest amount of, of readers. Thus, they don't have that big pu public pressure of the politician being afraid for the next term, for the next elections. Um, creating, <laughs> creating fear amongst the politicians is, is I've seen, being quite effective. Thank you.
want to uh, say, I don't, I don't think that's, that's obviously has a unique situation of being a celebrity, but I think the idea of getting these points in the general media and, and not only talk about nerds here, but not only us meeting and talking back and forth, but taking some of these points that we want to get across, boiling them down to some really key, very simple, understandable uh, points, and then trying to get them in the media through a celebrity or however you can, can, can really pay off. And we've had success with that in Denmark. I'm sure Cole is going to say more about that tomorrow with the socioeconomic value of fish and boiling it down to one, the price of one fish being caught. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a battle against the politicians. We've now gotten it in Denmark where some of the politicians are using this and, and they're quoting these numbers and being proud and they're the ones getting in the media for saying these fish are so valuable. Oh yeah. So so the point being is is all these things we're talking about here are super, super complicated and we all know that. But sometimes making less complicated, grab a simple point and, and, and try to get that some media attention however you can because um, that will get things rolling and, and we'll start changing an attitude out there. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and that that phenomenon is is what happened in Finland as well. As soon as people started talking, as soon as the mainstream media, the tabloids, news broadcasts started talking about fishing politics, a lot of politics politicians wanted to jump that bandwagon and take advantage of, you know, this great new fashion fishing. Let's protect the fish. Uh, some ministers did that as well. If the mainstream media didn't write about it, the politicians, you know, they don't. A lot of just the, the fish room guy in Germany, I don't know if you heard about it, I'm a fool the father of fish basins, is really um, active in this area to to uh, change these, uh, the, the CFP, or the, the system change the CFP to a more sustainable direction. And one measure was to introduce a fish ruler in Germany showing all the species from the Baltic and the North Sea, introducing it to the consumer, showing the fish in the lengths when it's getting mature. mature and the consumer could take it to the fish manger and could show it. So your, your place is much small, it's 24 centimeters, and it spawns only at 27 or something like that, in the Baltic, for example. And, and it, makes, it made a lot of noise in the press. There were a lot of articles. If you, if you put fish ruler in Google, you get uh, 100 hits um, or, or even more, where you find articles about this. But the, the impact was finally in never really reaching Brussels. Also, Rainer Fulzer went a couple of times to, to sessions, was invited to talk about the new concepts. And it was, at the end, something happens now, but um, it was extremely uh, slow process. And uh, probably it depends a little bit um, what you what you are expecting. If you act locally here in Finland and targeting um, freshwater species which are the targets are for the Baltic Samuels, and it's probably different if you target at something which is of interest for Spanish fishermen, for Portuguese sure. fishermen. The bigger the scale, the bigger the scale is, the stronger the lobby is, and exactly. the, the less sure. impact you are, your small activities might have. Right. And, you know, the UK has this campaign where all these celebrities are naked, hugging fish. Have, have you guys, have, has anybody seen it? Uh, I every now and then, every year, because I think it's a yearly campaign where they get new celebrities that are naked with fish, that brings it out to everybody's attention because everybody wants to see a celebrity naked. And she or he is holding a fish and it's about protecting the fish. So it could, you know, something remains. People remember it. Mainstream media are writing about it and again, it's more sexy for the politicians to jump the bandwagon and actually do something for the fish because all these medias are writing about it. Probably the best example of this is, is Keith and Wettings in his fish fight campaign. This got about uh, six million, six or seven million signatures at the European level. We've started very much similar to this, made a few TV programs. He's a, he's a celebrity chef. I've, I've, read it, I've yeah. seen this website. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, it can, it can definitely work. And isn't that naked fish hunting thing? Isn't it? I think that's different. I think that's the start. Okay. I've only seen the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
that in this situation, for example, the um, public persons like you, or maybe we should look for famous actors in Germany who can defend and support them. And, and you know, I find my situation is that I'm, I'm quite I'm quite a fishing nerd, a fish politics nerd, and I've got the time to actually do this research. Most celebrities don't have that time, but they have that interest of actually, you know, helping make a difference. When you ask for their signature on an, on a public appeal or a press release, if they're really, really into fishing, a lot of them are going to say yes, and just their signature will raise a lot of uh, reporters' attention. Um, so I, I really think it's a great idea to, to, to do in every country. And at the same time, it's a turnkey solution for a celebrity who, you know, who wants to do something good but doesn't have the time or doesn't know how to help in anything. It's kind of a turnkey solution for them as well. It's, it's a, it's a two-sided deal for a lot of these people that really, you know, they want to do something for a mutual common benefit. Let's get a comment from Jan uh, Would you like to see more celebrities in Brussels? <coughs> yeah, it's comment? years ago I sent, I sent the emails around to, uh, to our members to ask if they could give me some celebrity names, but I didn't get much. Um, so, uh, yes, I, I find it very useful. Jan <laughs> is Secretary General. The Send the email again. Yeah. <laughs> the problem with the experts is sometimes that you have a completely diametral opposite positions from one expert is promoting this strategy, the other one this one. And it ends up in fights and uh, in, in the public they, they, the impression is they do not know what they want. And so experts are probably not really the, 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 the best media. Approach. <laughs> to push this forward, I don't know. It's, it's impressive, so I will have a pick up this story and try to find the uh, ways in For, of course, I also have a question. What, the, the whole thing actually escalated when the Ministry of Agriculture got extremely annoyed about my blogging and campaigning. They invited me into, uh, into a meeting, a private meeting at the Ministry. And I went in, and they, uh, Quite in the early stages of the meeting, uh, they started telling me how, you know, I should not criticize the minister this opening in the public because it's interfering with his work, and and how how um, how salmon shouldn't be over politicized because salmon don't vote. And after the first <laughs> sentence, after the first sentence, I said, "Wait, listen, sorry, I've got my phone on. It's vibrating in my pocket." and I put the recorder on, and I recorded the remaining one and a half hours of the meeting, of them, you know, trying to shut me down, um, and then I brought it to the media's attention. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone never invited again. Yeah. They haven't invited me since. There was a political talk show on live Finnish, like, prime time national TV channel, and one of the ministry, ministries, uh, now resigned uh, heads of the fisheries department was there in live TV and, and I revealed this live. He didn't know what to expect and, and he, he, he tried to lie and you know say that nothing like this was discussed. And I knew that he's gonna deny it. So I let him say, you know, I let him deny it. And then I revealed that I actually I had the whole thing on, on my phone. You know. Things like this kind of help the whole fishing debate.